Hello, I'm Guy, and this is Guy Robot. Hello, so it's another video from Tamarindo for me, and I think this one might be a little bit controversial for some of the people on my channel. I'm here to say that I think Windows is actually better than Linux, and this isn't just a Linux sucks video, I'd like to actually put the real reasons I think Linux does suck compared to Windows and why I've switched back over the last year from using Gentoo on a day-to-day -day basis to using Windows again. Before I do that and to try and stem some of the hate from the people who love Linux on this channel, I love Linux too, right? I use Linux on a day-to-day -day basis. In the business I run, I would say probably three quarters of the servers that we've got are Linux servers. More than that, I'm actually working on a project at the moment to move half of our Windows.NET infrastructure onto .NET Core that runs on Docker on Linux to get away from Windows with that regard. I started using Linux in 1997 when it was, I think, Slackware 3.4. I downloaded it at a public library on floppy disks and installed it on my home computer with barely any idea what to do. And I then used it as my main operating system until 2004, I think at which point I switched to Windows for some gaming for a little bit, I then moved to Mac OS in 2006, back to Windows in late 2009, Mac OS again for a long chunk, and then Linux again at the end of, I think it was 2016, I switched back to Linux. And then January this year, I switched back to Windows. So I've used Linux over the years a lot as my main computer. I still use it as a server operating system, but I'm currently not using it at home. So why do I think it sucks? Let's start with software development. Now, obviously, yes, you can write software on Linux. There's a lot of software written on Linux for Linux and many other platforms. I do a lot of the work in the Microsoft stack, though, in particular, uh, Microsoft's.NET framework and C++. Now, the thing with that is that Visual Studio is a phenomenal development environment. Yes, I know I can get VI working pretty well. Yes, I know I can get Emacs working well, and I have tried dozens of different IDEs and development environments on Linux. Hell, I use them for years as my primary one. But the honest truth is, as a developer and looking at my productivity workflow, Visual Studio is awesome. If you haven't used it for a long time, you might not appreciate how good Visual Studio is. But compared to everything out there, it just works. And there's very few products in the software world you can say that about, let alone one that's aimed at developers. It just gets out of the way and lets you get on with work and do it productively. And then if you want it, there are add-ons and enhancements that you can plug in to make it even better. Now, I've tried Visual Studio Code on Linux, which works pretty well. It's Microsoft product they've released for, well, cross-platform, including Linux and Mac OS to make development easier. And it's nice, but it's not Visual Studio. The full IntelliSense that comes with Visual Studio means that you can write lines of code in about four key presses when you get used to it. And when you've got an awful lot to do, that does improve productivity. The multi-threaded debugging is nice, the remote deployment is nice, and hell, these days you can even deploy to Linux, write applications for Linux in C++ and in .NET Core, and deploy them straight from your Windows operating system, which is something that you can't do the other way around. It's much more difficult if you want to be writing software on Linux and then try and deploy that onto the Windows environment. Overall, working on Linux as a developer is fine. However, when working with Windows at the same time, using a virtual machine for development sucks compared to that. A multi-monitor VM just isn't the same. There's always a slight sense that you're not getting the power that you want from it. And so I've just not found working on Windows as a remote developer or under a VM as good as having the native thing. And that, as a developer, is the number one thing for me and something that is an impact. Next up, the desktop. Yep, this year is not going to be the year of the Linux desktop, nor is next year, probably nor is 10 years time from now. The reality is creating a complex desktop environment that looks and feels nice and is focused heavily around user interface is really difficult. Furthermore, if you want to do it, you need to get every single piece of software to follow a set of design schemes that all look and feel the same. Now, this is why for years macOS has won on the desktop experience because all the applications looked and felt the same. There was a very small set of kind of UI palettes that you could use and everyone stuck to them. If you go and use a GTK application on macOS, it sticks out like a sore thumb and the rest of it kind of looks and feels the same. It's got worse on macOS over time as there's been more and more software that's been released for it and they've all taken a different approach to user interface. Now the problem with Linux is everyone takes a different approach to user interface. There are dozens of different UI toolkits and furthermore you've then got all the different problems with how do you make it look and feel right in one particular distro and how it looks and works in that. And under that, even if everybody could agree on how things should look and feel in the first place, which is never going to happen in an open source world, 
the underlying technology is rubbish. Go and watch my video on Wayland and X11. Now, Wayland has its own problems that everybody has talked about, but X11 is still riddled with problems. If I look at where Linux is these days in user interface compared to where Linux was in user interface when I started using it back in the late 90s, I don't think we've come on that far since my original version of Enlightenment that I stuck on back in, what, 1999. Yes, it's a little bit more polished, but you can only polish a turd so much, and I think Linux has reached pretty much maximum turd polishing. Whereas on the other hand, Windows, when Vista came out, everyone hates Vista, but the new DWM architecture that came in really allowed for some lovely user interfaces to be created. That actually, I think, made it better than the uh, Mac OS frameworks that were there. And so Windows definitely wins hands down on user experience, not just for the integrity of applications looking and feeling and working the same, but for the underlying technologies that allow it to do that. And that's without even considering where it is with gaming. Now, I don't really care about gaming, but something I do care about is office suites. Microsoft Office is awesome. Yes, it's filled with bugs. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, you can complain about loads of things with it, but guys, have you tried to use LibreOffice? I mean, come on, it's just a different league. And that's if you're just thinking about word processing, Excel, and PowerPoint. I mean, okay, your documents are never gonna be able to be read by the majority of the world and the formats are gonna be corrupted, but if we put that to one side and the poor user experience and the slow application speed compared to using Office, we've still got one major thing, Outlook. Now, okay, Nobody likes writing emails. However, some of us get a lot of emails and you need a productive way to deal with that. And this is something that even macOS falls down on. I have never found a good business email client other than Outlook. In fact, maybe I should write one. That's probably a way to make some money. Um, but Linux sucks for email clients. macOS sucks for email clients. Even Outlook on macOS sucks. But Outlook on Windows is really nice when you have Exchange integration. So if you've got Exchange or Office 365 and you've got Outlook, they work together seamlessly for productivity. And although there are more than enough faults I can put towards it, it's still the best option out there in my opinion. And again, it helps my productivity and workflow. And that's the main thing when I'm trying to get stuff done. The other thing that's really important to me is virtualization and virtual machines. Working across different platforms and development environments and wanting to try out different settings, I use VMs all the time. Yeah, there's KVM. But you know what there is also instead of KVM, there is VMware Workstation Pro. The difference is light years away. Now I know VMware Workstation Pro is a commercial application and I know it's available on Linux. Now, in fact, I use VMware Workstation Pro when I was on Linux, but it somehow just feels nicer running it on Windows and it seems to work a bit better. VMware Workstation Pro still kicks the ass up anything open source on Linux. So this is again a case of if I was trying KVM and Kemu or anything else, it's all right, but it works better and it's faster and everything is just good when I'm using VMware compared to spending an eternity getting KVM up and running correctly. And for some reason, there's just that better feeling of how VMware Workstation works on Linux versus Windows. There were a number of small issues I ran into when I was running it on Linux that I just found a bit frustrating at times and I haven't come with that with Windows. And if you don't even want to, you've got Hyper-V on Windows, which is not for all operating systems, but certainly for major Linux and Windows ones, a great solution. And you can get that baked in for free. So you then sat there and I'm thinking, well, that's gonna win on virtualization as well. So Windows is not as bad as it used to be. And that's the thing, Windows is not as bad as it used to be. Now, if I look back on Windows circa 1997 to 1999, when I was first cutting my teeth on Linux, Christ, we're talking Windows 98 first edition, and then we're even talking Windows Millennium Edition, which was, without a doubt, the worst operating system that has ever been released. So you're comparing that with Linux, and Linux won hand down. I mean, Linux won for productivity. It frankly won for desktop environment. It won for a lot of things back in the late 90s. But these days, the reality is that Windows is pretty good. So I run Windows Server, not Windows 10. So that is an important thing to make which means I cut out a lot of the desktop crap that I don't want with it. I cut out a lot of the monitoring and the privacy settings that are there. And you can configure it an awful lot more than you can the desktop one. So I'm not comparing it with Windows 10, but I don't think that that is necessarily a bad thing because there are so many variants of Linux that they all do different things as well. So when I talk about Windows, I'm primarily talking about server, but the same of this applies to a lot of Windows 10. Now, What's happened to Windows over the years? Well, actually, we've already talked about DWM and the rendering interface has got great since Vista. Now, Vista got panned, but another thing that came in was a big rewrite of the networking stack. I think that was Vista anyway. And since then, the networking has been rock solid compared to how it used to be, and it's been enjoyable to use. 
it no longer feels like a performance hog compared to how it used to. In fact, I feel it's pretty quick to start up boot quicker than Linux is these days, frankly, even with a really small configuration. From the second my BIOS is done, I can be to my desktop and Windows in four seconds. Most Linux distributions are going to take me longer than that with a comparable set of services starting up and running. Now, I don't care if things start in the background. I want to be at my desktop and productive quickly after a reboot. And reboots, there are less of them than there used to be. Windows used to reboot God every single day. Running on server, I just don't have as many as I used to have. I maybe reboot once a month for critical updates at the moment, and that's it. There's also been introduced, almost 10 years ago now, Server Core, which means you can have a server operating system without a huge user interface. Now, for a long time, this was kind of a niche product, but this is the default mode for installing server now. So you literally just have PowerShell, console management, and it feels more like a slimmed down Linux configuration. It's nowhere near as much of a resource hole. From a server side, Windows has become more compelling. And on the Windows server and desktop side, you've now got the Windows Linux subsystem built into it, which means that you can run Linux in Windows, which just increases your productivity further if you want to be able to do that without even needing a virtual machine. The amount of different things that have come out of Windows in the last decade are phenomenal. Now you compare that to the other way around and Linux is all right. Yeah, the kernel's bigger, there's some more drivers, but it doesn't feel it's made as many improvements as Windows has over the same period of time. Then there's the fact that I actually work in a business. And so part of that means a lot of stuff does require Windows. And because I believe in productivity, I think Windows is better for a lot of that. So we have Microsoft Active Directory to run a lot of our authentication and managing the systems. And Linux authentication and integration with Active Directory is all right. It's just a pain to configure and it's really annoying and it's still not the same for management as it is having everything on a Microsoft stack. So although you can do the argument the other way around, and that if you have everything on a Linux stack, you can manage it in the same way and it'd be easy. Personally, because of all the reasons for using Windows, it then ends up that it's just that bit more frustrating to manage Linux systems than it is to do it the other way around. Not impossible, and it's a small amount, and we do have the both of them working together. But when we're talking about my desktop computer, now I'm gonna to want to have Windows because it makes it just that bit easier to integrate and run everything on the rest of the network. And finally, I can't really find what I actually want to run on Linux. I've never found the perfect distro for me. I quite like Gen 2 because of the hands-on approach, but I just found it taking a bit too much time away from my productivity. Now, maybe I need to try Arch properly and use that for a few months and see how that goes. But all of the other kind of easy to use distributions, frankly, I just don't see the benefit of. So I still need to do some more research and find something out. Maybe I will try Arch again at some point and move back to Linux. But if we're going to look back at this then, fundamentally, it's all about my productivity. As a developer, I find I'm more productive on Windows, certainly at the moment. The user interface in Windows is miles ahead. It makes everything easier. That's for getting things like hardware, getting it running on a laptop, and the number of other complaints that people can stick at Linux. Windows has improved so much over the years. The Office Suite is phenomenal compared to anything you're going to get on Linux, and it does just work. Windows has come on in stride since we go back to the late 90s. Linux, mm, not so much, frankly. It's made improvements, and it's had a lot more developers and a lot more gone into the kernel, but not on the same level. Now, let me reinforce what I said. I still use Linux daily on dozens of machines. All of our monitoring stuff is there. Half of our web servers, our load balances are running it. There are a lot of reasons for running Linux. I'm just not running it as my main computer anymore because I think it sucks for all these reasons. It doesn't mean I don't like Linux, and I'm probably going to go to running another distro for another 6 to 12 months' time because I think it's good to keep my hands in doing it on a day-to-day -day basis. But I do believe that Windows is currently winning which of the two operating systems is better for a day-to-day -day use. I've also got FreeBSD on my network and other BSD stuff when it comes to networking. There are reasons to use the operating system and use the right tool for the right job. And Microsoft see this as well. Microsoft have embraced Linux over the last few years. And it's phenomenal the amount of integration between Windows and Linux that's now become and spearheaded by Microsoft, the amount of open sourcing they've done of their own technologies. .NET Core is a phenomenal thing. I genuinely believe the .NET framework is one of the best and easiest to work with in the world, and bringing that to Linux is awesome. That's why when I was doing Wayland, I was trying to bring uh, .NET Core window managers. So I think there's a lot of reasons to be using Windows these days. And I think Linux, there's a lot of reasons, but they're not necessarily desktop. Now, I'd love to hear what you all think on this. I suspect that those of you that are Linux fans are probably going to disagree with quite a lot of what I've said. Remember, I still love Linux, but there are so many problems with it, and I think it's naive for a community to just ignore them and pretend that everything's okay because of it. Windows 10 has a ton of issues, particularly around privacy. I'm not ignoring those. Everything that you think is wrong with Windows 10 probably is, and I probably agree with you, but that doesn't mean that on the balance of weighing it up, I don't think that I am currently working better in a Windows environment. 
Let me know what you think. Am I utterly mad? Have I completely lost the plot? Or do you see the reasons why actually using Windows can be significantly better than using Linux, even if you are a diehard Linux fan? Please leave your comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will hopefully see you again next time. Thanks.